Dennis here, and right now we are not going to be talking about Winnie the Pooh. Instead, I'm going to share with you how I get consistent phone calls from Google. I'm going to show you how you can set up your Google My Business listing for maximum results so you can start getting free phone calls from people actually looking to buy from you. Pro tip. Rumors speculate that Winnie the Pooh learned his badass business skills from this channel, so you might want to consider subscribing. Once you start getting free phone calls, you can grow your business, deliver great customer service, and make that money, buy a Lambo, get a And as a bonus, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you a hack that you can use to rank your Google My Business listing instantly also i will have my scheduling link for my calendar in the description below so if you want to work with me personally and i will take a deep dive into your gmb into your seo strategy into your ranking situation to help you get those phone calls and leads for your business go ahead and schedule your consultation down below in that link so the first thing that you want to do is to have all of your information in one place about your business so in this case i have sacramento plumbing company as the name of the business, the address 301 Douglas, and the phone number that I'm going to be using for my business. A side note here is I definitely do recommend having a WordPress website, but it is not a requirement for this video, although it is highly recommended if you wanna take your ranking to the next level. So the first thing that we need to do is to do a Melissa address check. So what do I mean by that? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this address right over here, and I'm gonna Google Melissa address check I'm gonna press the first link and I'm just gonna paste in the address submit boom so what we're looking at here is that we want to make sure that this address is verified the first thing uh, that's there is that it's verified and then the second thing it's also very important is that we want to make sure that this city town or place is located in the city in the city that we are trying to rank for right sometimes as i'm going to show you right now you can have a city and you can have an address with a city but it's actually located in a different suburb which is going to make it harder for you to rank when you're trying to rank for a specific city so let me give you an example of that right now so i typed in another address here and as you can see although the address states that we are located in the city of sacramento if we actually go look into the melissa data check right over here we're going to see that the city place or town is located within arden arcade now if this is your actual physical business place there's nothing you can really do about it but as you can see google is seeing that this address is located within Arden Arcade, which is technically not within the city of Sacramento, although the address is saying that it's based in Sacramento, is different from the city that you're trying to rank for, you're going to have a harder time ranking on Google. Now, this is not a deal breaker for sure, but like I said, it's going to be slightly harder for you to rank. And if possible, you want to try to get an address that is actually located within the city that you're trying to rank for. And if you do not have a business place, you can actually rent or get access to what you want to do is you can use an online vendor like jmb swarm to order a google my business listing that's done for you with pretty much any address that you want uh, so what you want to do in that case is just find an address that's actually located within the city limits of the city you're trying to rank for and just use that address when you're verifying your google my business through a third party vendor so the next thing we want to check is the phone number that we selected for our business. Now, I usually use tracking numbers for my businesses as it's so much easier to reroute the phone calls to an actual uh, business number and keep track and record the phone calls when you are when you have clients uh, or customers calling into your business. So what I do is when I pick a tracking number is I want to Google the number and I want to make sure that there's, first of all, no confusion with any other businesses with that specific number. Maybe though that business had the number in the past and then they stopped doing business, but Google is still keeping track of that phone number on the, uh, inside of their index. The second thing uh, is, uh, is that I want to check for is that it seems like this phone number is getting robo calls from. So that's definitely not something you want to use when you have a business. So just, you just want to make sure that there's uh, no scammer 
reports coming in from that phone number. At this point, we have checked all of the information we need to check to make sure our business is setting off on the right foot and ranking on Google. So the next part is actually going to be setting up your Google My Business listing. Head over to google.com forward slash business and then go ahead and press the manage now button. That's going to bring another window where Google is going to ask you to sign in. And once you sign in, you want to create a new business location and a whole new Google My Business entity. So we're going to start off with our business name. So in this case, we have already named the business as Sacramento Plumbing Company. We're just going to paste that in here and we're going to press next. Now, the first question that Google is asking us is whether or not we want our address to show up in our Google My Business profile. Now, theoretically, you can select to not have your address show up in your GMB profile. But as we're going to learn later with things like citations where addresses are required. So in general, you won't be able to actually hide your address on the Internet if you want to rank your Google My Business profile. However, on Google, you can still hide your address. But as we're going to learn later, if you want to verify your Google My Business listing, you're still going to need to have an address associated with the listing where a postcard will come to your mail and that can be things like your residential home. So all in all, there's basically no way of escaping having a physical address listed on file with Google even if it is a residential address. Now you do want to note that you can always turn off the visibility of your Google My Business address. However, it's still going to be on file with Google. So at this point, we just want to press yes and press next. So the next screen here is asking us to put in our address, which is what we're going to do right now. When you start typing in an address, Google is going to ask you whether you want to add a line or not. So if you have a suite number that you're looking to put your address in, go ahead and press add a line and add your suite number on the second line. So after you have filled out your address, go ahead and press next. So at this point, Google is going to check the address that you just entered to make sure there's no other existing businesses on the address. Now, if there are, that's OK. Go ahead and select any of these businesses if they are your business. But if none of these businesses match your business, go ahead and just press none of these. Now, this next question is asking whether or not you service your customers outside your office, meaning if you, let's say, are a pizza delivery shop and you have customers coming into your place of business, but then you also do delivery, you want to press yes. If you just have an office space where you don't go out to your customers, you want to press no. Now, the next question is that Google wants us to put in a business category for our business. At this point, we're just going to put in one business category and then we're going to move on and we're going to add more categories later. So go ahead and put in a category that matches as close as possible to your business type and go ahead and press next. Now here we want to put in some more details that Google is asking us to do. Go ahead and go over to your information screen where you have your business information, copy the phone number. Now after you put in a phone number, Google is going to ask you whether or not you have a website. Now if you really want to take your Google My Business rankings to the next level, I highly recommend a WordPress website. Now if you don't have a word uh, now if you don't have a website at this point, that's okay as well. Go ahead and just press get a free website based on your information. If you do have a website put it in your current website URL on this box right here. All right, there you go. And now you're finished. So at this point, you just want to press finish. And on the next screen, Google is actually going to ask you to verify your business with this location. So what that means is Google is creating your Google My Business listings, but then they also want to verify it by this location. So what they're going to do is they're going to send a postcard to this business location and you just want to put in your contact name to have this postcard mailed to this location, which is going to have a code. That code is going to be put into Google My Business to verify your listing. Now, unfortunately, not all of us have a business location which we can use for Google My Business listing. And that is why there are third party services that offer a Google My Business listing verification service where you just put in almost any address that you want and they're going to verify the address for you. A good, a good example of a third party verification service is gmbswarm.com. I recommend them. I am personally not affiliated with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip this part for now and I'm going to press verify later because I'm going to show you how you can actually optimize your Google My Business listing right now.
First thing that once we're inside our Google My Business profile is we want to check our competitor category. So we're going to be focusing on this category right here. But in this case, Sacramento Plumbing Company, I'm pretty sure plumber is the right category category. But here is I'm going to show you a different business with an example where you can actually relate to this. So I'm going to type in decking contractor Sacramento. And we're going to see that there's actually going to be different categories that our competitors have chosen. So in this first example, we have a general contractor, the second is a deck builder, first, the third is a fence contractor. So I'm not really sure which category I should pick based on our competitor. So in that case, you want to target a bigger city. So instead of Sacramento, I'm going to type in Los Angeles. I can see that the top three results all use deck builder. And what's that? What that's telling me is that Google is rewarding businesses who use the proper category. So I need to use deck builder if I was to use a decking contractor company. Now, in this case, Sacramento Plumbing Company, plumber sounds about right. So what we want to do is again, we want to look for um, emergency plumber, Los Angeles. Let's see. As you can see, they're all plumbers, which means that we have selected the right category as plumber. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to see if there's any additional categories that might relate to my business. So I'm going to search plumber and we can see that there's a plumbing supply store. I'm going to see emergency. So as we can see that there's not really anything else other than plumber that fits our business type. But for example, if you were a dentist, you can see that the dentist has emergency dental service as one of the categories. So so instead of just putting a uh, dentist as the primary category, which I think you should do, you want to add a, a couple more additional categories such as emergency dental service. Now you don't want you do not want to add like 10 different categories, you want to keep it to a few such as two or three additional categories in your additional category section right here. So that's it in terms of filling out the proper categories on our Google My Business listing. Next, we're going to move on to filling out all the rest of the information. Now, the next part we want to look at is the service area. If you are a stationary office where you have clients coming into your office, you do not need to worry about this. Now, if you are a service area business, such as a plumber, you want to make sure that the service area portion is filled out correctly. We're going to look at it right now. The way I usually do this is I break it down by county, city, and zip code. So what do I mean? I start off with the county. In this case, the county I want to service is Sacramento County. So I just type in Sacramento County. Next, I look at the cities within this county. So I just want to type in cities within Sacram Sacramento County county there we go so i have all of these cities within sacramento county i'm going to put in all of these cities into the google my business listing all right so you can see here that i put in some of the cities within sacramento county what you want to do is you really want to fill out all of the cities within the county that you want to uh, provide service in. Now, sometimes you have multiple counties that you're providing service in. So go ahead and put the first county, the second county, and then all of the cities within those two counties. Next thing is we want to look at the zip codes. So we just type in zip codes in Sacramento County. And there we go. Here's a list of all the zip codes within Sacramento County. Go one by one. Just copy and paste them into the Google My Business and boom, there we go. Sometimes it, Google was going to say that this zip code is invalid. Go ahead and just press the X to uh, delete the zip code. It's fine. But go ahead and, and fill out as many zip codes as possible. It's really going to help Google understand who you service and who which zip codes and cities and counties you provide service to. And it's going to help you rank. Now, after you filled out the service area, or perhaps you didn't fill out the service area, the next three things you want to fill out are the hours, the business description, and the opening date. Now, these are pretty straightforward. Go ahead and press on the hours, not what I did there, and go ahead and just put in your business hours at this point. 
All right, next you wanna fill in a business description. As you can see, you have 750 characters. Go ahead and fill out as much of that as possible and make sure you include your target keyword keywords. For example, Sacramento plumber might be in there just to be a target keyword for you. Go ahead and put in a few target keywords that you wanna rank for. The next thing is you wanna put in an opening date. Go ahead and, and put in a date, it doesn't really matter. So the next thing we want to look at are the services. Now Google My Business used to have a service column right over here in the info section, but instead they switched it to products and moved it to the left hand uh, menu bar over here. So go ahead and press products and press get started. And in this product collection, what we want to do is if you don't sell a physical product, go ahead and put in a service offering that you do. So for example, in this case, it would be Sacram Sacramento Plumbing Services. Now the product name could be something like a subset of the Sacramento Plumbing Services, which would be em Emergency Plumber. Actually, it would be Sac Sacramento Emergency Plumber. Okay. Now additional details, you can fill out this as well. I do recommend uh, filling out the collection description and the product description. The collection description could be something like Sacramento Plumbing Company offers Sacramento Plumbing Services for Sacramento re residents at an affordable price. In terms of the product description, I would put something like Sacramento Plumbing Company offers uh, emergency plumbing services for residents in Sacramento at an affordable price. And then next you wanna put add a button if you want this to redirect to your website, uh, if you do not have a website, that's okay as well. Now, the, na the last thing we wanna do is we wanna upload a image. This image should be geo-optimized, and the way you geo-optimize the image is you wanna go, go ahead and put image geo in the search box and click the first uh, link that pops up. Go ahead and press start now. Go ahead and upload an image here. I'm just gonna put a random image here. And what we want to do is we put we want to change the latitude and the longitude to our business location. So let's say I already had a Google My Business listing verified. What I would do is I would just put in something like Asper Life Insurance. I know I have that business listing verified. All right, once you're inside the business listing, you're gonna see up top in the URL, you can see the la the la longitude and the longitude. Go ahead and copy the latitude and the longitude of the business. Go ahead and, and paste them in here. And you just wanna, uh, in the document name, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure there's your keyword inside the document name. So you would put something like Sacramento Plumber and just copy and paste that for this for the description. Press right exif tags, okay? And then next you wanna press download. So go ahead and save that downloaded image to your computer and then press the add product image button and upload the image that you just optimized. At this point, we can add our collection or services that we offer into Google. So we just wanna press publish you should be able to see your services when somebody is looking for the services on Google. Now, the way I actually fill this out is I would add more products. So I would put in not Sacramento Emergency Plumber, I can put in something like Sacra Sacramento Residential Plumber and go ahead and fill out a description, add an image and press save. So you would have more services that you offer. Another product collection, what I would do is actually I would, uh, in the other collection, I would put a county that I want to service as well. Maybe I want to do uh, what cities are inside of Sacramento County and I would start adding all of these different cities within the product collection. So I, I would put something like Citrus Heights Plumbing Services. And then now in the product name, I would put something like Citrus Citrus Heights Emergency Plumber. There we go. Go ahead and upload an image that's that has been optimized and just save it. And just fill out as much of this as possible. That's going to help Google understand what your business is about and bring more relevancy for your ranking factors.
After you added your products, aka service area offerings, the next thing you want to do is you just want to add some photos. Go ahead and press photos over on the left hand menu side. So inside of the photos tab, you want to add a few images right in here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add the logo and then you also want to add some images of your business and your product and your team potentially. It could be stock images, it could be your actual images, but you wanna add a few images in here. Now the secret to this and making sure it works correctly is you wanna actually photo and not photo optimize, you wanna geo optimize your images. So the way you do that is you wanna put in a geo tag photos into Google and then you're gonna press in the first result. So you can see this URL at the top if you want to copy it and not do the Google search. First thing you want to do is put in the latitude and the longitude of your business. So what you do is you just put in an address of your business building or your residential address and do a Google search. Go ahead and press on the Google map. Go ahead and zoom in to your building. Okay and just right click on the building and press what's here, okay? That's going to show you the latitude and the longitude at the bottom over here, but they're also going to be in this URL bar up top. I find it easier to copy and paste it from the URL bar up top. So I'm just gonna put the latitude into this tool and the, there we go, and the longitude in this tool as well. Boom. Now, the next thing I want to uh, put the document name as a keyword. So for example, if I was a deck installer in Sacramento, I would put deck installer Sacramento as my keyword and the image description as the deck installer in Sacramento. I would just press write exif tags and just download this image. Once the image is downloaded, go ahead and go back into your Google My Business uh, Manager. Go ahead and press um, product, for example, and just press the plus sign at the top right. Upload your image. Here we go. Give it a second to upload. And once the image has uploaded, it's going to show up in your product images, which is great. So you wanna do that for a few images, again, five to 10 images, that's going to really help your um, Google My Business out. And Google is actually going to use the EXIF data from the images to further see where your business is located. So that's going to help your rank. Next thing we wanna look at is our website, our GME website. So we're gonna do that over on the left-hand side over here. We're just gonna press website. On the website, it's going to give you the screen. Go ahead and just press get started. It's going to make your website. Now this is important even if you already have a website or even a WordPress website, you want to set this thing up. All right. So what I'm gonna do here is, in terms of the primary button, I want to change the primary button to make an appointment or call now. All right, that's gonna give us the option to put in a phone number. All right, call this number, that's the correct number. Next is in the headline, we want to put in our main keyword. If we are a plumbing company, our main keyword would be something like plumber Sacramento. And you can add in a hyphen and just put in your business name. So you can be something like Sacramento plumbing company. The description, go ahead and just, you know, put in plumber here in the description and you want to fill out as much of this as possible with some additional keywords. So in terms of the summary header, go ahead and you know put we are a plumber plumbing company in Sacramento. Right. So we are a plumbing company. We are a Sacramento plumbing company. And in the summary body, here's where you can actually uh, put in more characters. Uh, so again, you wanna fill out as much of this as possible with some keywords. So we're just gonna press, press publish for now. There we go. We wanna get this published. Cool. In terms of the summary body, try to get an article. You can actually buy an article from iWrite.com and or that might not be correct. Go ahead and Google iWriter. 
go ahead and just order an article that's 500 words or a thousand words that's keyword optimized to your business and just copy and paste it in here and press uh, publish. This website is probably not going to be your main website. If it is, that's okay. Research has shown that most people don't even look at websites anymore and they just go on Google, they see what Google is showing them and they call the business that's popping up on Google first with good reviews. Now, press uh, up top right now, I'm gonna have a link on how to get reviews or you can actually buy reviews. Um, that video is gonna show you how to do uh, both of those options. But other than that, that covers it for the Google My Business uh, optimization. As you can see on the Google My Business site, um, it's going to pull in all the images that you put in your photos tab. So go ahead and put in, go ahead and put in as much uh, photos as you possibly can. Five to ten should uh, do it. And um, yeah, uh, that's your Google My Business website. The most important part with your GMB website is the keyword in the header. Google is going to associate that and it's going to help your rank higher. The next thing we want to look at are posts. So go ahead and press try it now. And here you can actually select different types of posts. Now, the interesting thing about posts is if you are consistent with them, they're actually going to help you rank, which is very interesting. But um, I want to show you what a post looks like. So here's one of my businesses and um, here we go. At the bottom of the Google My Business listing, we have what are posts. Now you can see that this post is set to December 31st, which means that this post is actually going to stay on the front page or on the, on the Google My Business section up to December 31st because this is an offer post. Now you wanna have a mix of offer and non-offer posts, something like uh, what's new is not, not an, is a non-offer post, something like an offer is definitely an offer post. So go ahead and uh, the first thing you want to do is always have a nice photo for the post. So I'm just going to use this one for example. As you can see, I uploaded this photo. In terms of the offer, I can put something like, let me use this example, free life insurance quote. So I'm going to use something like uh, free decking installation estimate. Copy the offer. So the offer title should be free decking installation estimate. The offer details something like Again, I'm going to look at this one, you know, just put in something like uh, we offer free estimates for residents in Sacramento, la la la. Now, in terms of the end date, this is where it gets interesting. You can actually put the end date to pretty far out, for example, at the end of the year. So I'm just going to put that, uh, make a button, you can press something like, um, like book and uh, a link can go to your website or they might perhaps uh, give you a call from Google My Business listing when they see this offer. But more importantly than this is that when you have a few of these uh, posts and when you post them consistently, they're actually a ranking factor for your Google My Business and I have seen definite improvements in ranking when you have uh, kind of like a scheduled posting for, for your Google My Business posts. For example, such as once a week or twice a week where you have different posts coming out and then you can, um, you're going to see ranking rankings increase from these posts. All right. So that's how you make a post. Go ahead and just publish the post. Uh, this offer post is going to stick around for a while. What's new is usually going to stick about f around for about a week. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you have any events going on, go ahead and put an event there. If you have any specific products that you sell, you can always list a product there. But for the most part, I just do offer and what's new posts, kind of mix them up and, uh, you know, keep it fresh and post consistently. That's going to help you rank. Another thing we want to do is want to seed our question and answer uh, questions. So up top over on the right hand side over here where it says complete your listing. If your listing is verified, you should see a view on maps and view on search button. Go ahead and press the view on search button and you should be able to see your Google My Business listing, uh, something like this. Boom, there we go. It should be showing up over on the right hand side. And in this question and answers box, what you want to do is you want to ask a question. All right. And here I'm going to show you an example of how you should be filling this out. But here we go. We can see that, um, what I do is I usually ask something like, do you provide a uh, blank? And I would put your service offering in uh, the specific county or the specific city or area that you want to rank for. And you just put in, um, you know, all these different cities within the county you're trying to rank for. 
if you're trying to rank for multiple counties, you can put in all of the cities within those counties. So um, Roseville, Lincoln, Sacramento, as you can see, it's the same question and I'm providing the question and the answer as well. You can definitely do that. It's not against Google's terms of service. The reason for filling out and preceding these question and answers is because there are some keywords within these question and answers that Google can use to further utilize and further understand what your business is about, who you are and prove to Google that you are a legitimate business who needs to be ranked. The hack to rank your Google My Business listing instantly is to add keywords to your business listing name. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. We're gonna modify our business name. Now, you need to understand that this maneuver is a maneuver that increases risk, okay? Something like, for example, if your business name was Casper, right? That business name tells us nothing. Now, if you were to put in a bunch of different keywords, such, such as Sacramento plumber, Bay Area plumber, like keyword stuffing does not work and you're definitely going to get suspended and reported on Google. What you can do is slightly add a couple modifiers. Again, this does increase risk, but Google places so much weight in terms of the rankings on the business name that it's almost, that it ranks instantaneously. It just does. So what we're gonna do is, for example, if you have a non-descript business name, you wanna add two things, and you wanna add these two keyword modifiers. The first is you wanna add your location. So when somebody searches in, so some, when somebody searches plumber Sacramento, if Sacramento is within your business name, you're going to rank a lot higher. The second part is you want to, the second keyword modifier you want to add is your service offering. So as you can see, I did a search for keyword, for keyword plumber Sacramento. I want to make sure that the word plumber is in there as well. So basically I'm looking at my main keyword such as Plumber Sacramento and I'm trying to figure out how can I add the words Plumber and Sacramento into my title. So if I just had a nondescript business name such as Casper, I would do something like uh, Casper and then I would do something like uh, Sacra Sacramento Plumber. Now this might not be the best example, but let's use another one. We could do something like um, Armstrong Plumbing. So we can already see that Armstrong Plumbing, the business name, already has the keyword plumbing in there. And Google is smart enough to understand plumbing, plumber. It can uh, understand those different variations. What we want to do is we want to add the city name in which we're trying to rank for at the end of our business name. So when somebody searches Plumber Sacramento and we have Arnold Armstrong Plumbing hyphen Sacramento, we can see Google is going to pull you up a lot higher because in the business name, you have the keyword Sacramento and you have a different variation of the keyword plumber in the business name as well. So that's something you want to uh, mess about. When you press apply, this is very important. When you press apply, Google is going to change your business name but what you can do to make it accept the business name a little bit faster is you can actually go into your hours and change the hours just a little bit, okay? Change the hours just a little bit and press apply and that's a little bypass to make sure your uh, business name kind of, it, it pushes the approval for the business name a little bit faster through. For those of you that stuck around to the end of this video, I want to say thank you. You are the true fans who actually want to transform your life, change your business, etc. Now, I'm going to give you a special gold nugget. When you're looking to rank your Google My Business listing and doing SEO work in general, focus on a holistic approach to ranking. Don't expect one little hack or one little tidbit to instantly give you everything in terms of ranking. Guys, approach it like a steady source of transformation for your Google My Business listing, for your website, etc., for your rank for your overall ranking strategy. But the point is do it consistently and holistically instead of focusing on a one-time hack, one-time strategy, one-time link, or one of those one-time tactics. 
focus on the big picture and trust me you will get results all right thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you next time